Hello and namaste. My name is Brandon and welcome to the next video in my series on basic statistics. If you are new to the channel, welcome. It is great to have you. If you're a returning viewer, it is great to have you back. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with classmates, colleagues, or friends, or anyone else you think might benefit from watching. So now that we are introduced, let's go ahead and get to it. So this video is the next in our series where we're learning about regression model building techniques. So up to this point, we have learned about forward selection and backward elimination. Now, luckily, stepwise is just the combination of the two. So if you understand forward and backward, you are 90% of the way there to understand stepwise. So because of that, we're gonna make this video short, high level and conceptual because you probably have most of the info you already need. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So to put things in context, just remember that there are three common techniques for building iterative regression models. So forward selection, backward elimination, and then this video, which is about stepwise regression. And it's actually very popular. People gravitate to stepwise for some reason. The fourth common technique is not iterative. It's called best subsets, and that will be the next topic in this series, the next video. Best subsets examines all possible combinations of feature variables, it's sort of a brute force method that can be computationally expensive, and the output can be very, very long if you don't control it. The analyst can specify the maximum number of features in the final model if they so choose, and the analyst can request the best, say, two or three models for each number of feature variables. So the top three two variable models, the top three three variable models, and so on and so forth. But we'll talk about that more in the next video. Now, these methods will not always produce the same best model. And actually, in best subsets, you will have competing metrics as to which one is the best model. And again, we'll talk about that in the next video. But keep in mind, these may not all arrive at the same model. So remember, the entire goal of regression model building is to reduce the error sum of squares. So we want to take the SSC and reduce it to the smallest possible value without overfitting the model. So we want the simplest model that explains the maximum variance in our dependent variable. We decide using a threshold value, and in these cases we've been using the p-value, but there are others, on the partial f statistic. And that represents the unique contribution of the reduction in SSE of that feature variable. Now forward selection adds features one by one to an empty model, so we start empty until no features overcome our threshold value. And once the features are in, they never leave. Backward elimination is the opposite. So there we start with a full model and we pull variables out one by one if they don't overcome the threshold value. And once a feature leaves, it never returns. So you can see the difference there. So if I were to sum up this video in one slide, it's this, stepwise regression is just forward selection and backward elimination combined into one process. And we'll see how that works here in a second. So stepwise is just a combination of forward and backward. There are two threshold values this time, one for entry and one for exiting the model. Usually the threshold to exit is set a bit more liberally. For example, if we have 0.05 to enter and we'll have 0.10 to exit. So you can see kind of how that works. What this does is it makes the model a bit more stable so we don't have feature variables just flying in and out of the model everywhere. So the process is very stepped. That's why it's called stepwise. So we go forward, we evaluate our feature variables, then we do a backward step. If any can be eliminated, then we evaluate, go forward again, evaluate, backward, and that's the step. Forward, evaluate, backward, evaluate, forward, evaluate, backward evaluate. We just keep doing that process, hence stepwise. So at each step, we evaluate the model. If a feature is no longer contributing to the reduction in error, or the SSE, it is removed. It is deleted. Then we move forward again. So features can re-enter at a later step, and that's what distinguishes stepwise from the first two methods. So once a variable is removed, if the SSE changes, you know, like I said, these models are living, breathing things, and the sum of squares will be reallocated at each step. So if at a later step, that variable can contribute to the reduction in SSE, then it can re-enter. And that's the difference. So stepwise allows re-entry at a later step. 
So like most things, there are some pros and cons to Stepwise. One big pro is that it's much more flexible than forward selection and backward elimination. Because in those two methods, once a variable is in or out, that's it. It can't come back in or it can't leave again. So Stepwise allows us to reevaluate and put variables that were eliminated at one step back in. Stepwise is also very transparent. There's no black box thing going on here. So we can see in our output exactly what is happening at each step. So our output will almost always tell us we enter this variable at this step, at this step, this one left, and then we enter this one, and then maybe the one that left earlier comes back in later. It's very transparent. So you can tell exactly what's going on and how your model is changing. So a con to stepwise is that it may produce combinations of features that are a bit strange and don't make sense. Stepwise is much better at practical predictions because if you're trying to predict a value, you know, the manager of the business or someone else probably doesn't care if the variables make a whole lot of practical sense. They just want good predictions. But that leaves open the fault of stepwise and it's not very good at making theoretical models. So when we make theoretical models trying to explain sets of variables that explain a dependent variable where we enter variables into sets or something like that, stepwise isn't good at that because it can produce some very strange combinations. So I would imagine most people watching this video fall in the former category, just trying to make good practical predictions in business or whatever else. So you probably don't need to worry about this that much for your purposes. So let's take a rough look at how this might work visually. Now this is a very rough process sort of diagram, so forgive my graphical skills, but the thing I want you to get from this is actually the process. It's not you know, my artistic abilities here. So let's say we have five feature variables. I'll reference them as V1, V2, V3, V4, and V5 for the rest of this slide. So we start with forward selection. So we look at our five variables here and we say, hmm, which one reduces the SSE the most and does it meet our threshold value? Because reducing error the most does not mean it meets the threshold value. Okay, it has to like be both. So let's say V2 is that variable. It reduces error the most and it meets the threshold value for entry into the model. So V2 is in. Now we have V1, V3, V4, and V5 still outside the model. Now, there's no real backward step here because we'd end up right back where we started. So why would we just remove a variable we just entered when there are no other variables in the model to change it? That's the important thing. So we look at our other four variables here and let's say at this stage, V4 enters the model. So it's the next one that reduces error the most and meets our threshold value for entry. So now we have V2 and V4 in the model. Then we pause, we look and make sure the entry of V4 into the model could have changed V2. So we have to look. We ask ourselves, do they both still contribute to a significant reduction in error? If they do, they stay. If one of them falls below the threshold value to exit, then we remove it. So let's say for the sake of argument, they're both fine. Now we look at the next three variables, V1, V3, and V5. So after doing that, we see that V5 enters the model. So now we have V2, V4, V5. Those are in, and V1 and V3 are out. So now we stop, we look at V2, V4, and V5, so we ask ourselves, do any of those fall below the threshold to exit the model? And let's say at this stage, because now we have three variables and the sum of squares has shifted around between those three variables, let's say V4 exits. It no longer meets our criteria to remain in the model. So we'd remove V4, we look at V1 and V3 to see if they could enter, and it might look like this. So in this case, V4 exits, V1 enters. So now we have V2, V1, and V5 in our model. V3 is still outside, and V4 was just removed. Now remember, V4 could return at a later step. And stepwise, there's nothing prohibiting that. So in our next step, let's say we have V2, V1, V5. V3 never makes it in the model, and then V4 never overcomes the threshold to entry again, and it remains outside. Now, it could have entered, 
So it depends on, again, how the sum of squares out is allocated. But just because it exited at one point doesn't mean it can't enter at a later point. So you can see this sort of back and forth stepwise process on how variables enter the model, how we decide if they leave the model, and if they might enter the model again at a later step. And that's what we call it stepwise regression. So here's some output. So you can see here that this is jump, by the way, JMP, jump by SAS. You can see that in the settings here, we have a threshold to enter and a probability threshold to leave. That's what we discussed before. We can see that we have a mixed direction. That means forward and backward. So our SSE, these are all the measures we have talked about before. We can see down here our F ratios and our probabilities and so on and so forth. We can see that we have our step history down here. That's what I mean by transparency. So the software will tell us exactly what happened. So action entered, action entered, action entered. And if a variable leaves, it'll say exit. And it'll give us all of our probabilities down here as well. It's very transparent. And then these are just some things from previous videos I've done. If you want to know the squared semi-partial correlation, which is the unique ability of each feature to reduce the SSE, you can look at it that way. It's another way of looking at it. All right, so that wraps up this video on stepwise regression. Again, it's just forward selection and backward elimination combined into one process. So it's pretty easy to understand. So in the next video, we'll talk about best subsets, which can get a bit more complicated. I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you learned some things and I look forward to seeing you again in the next video. Take care, bye-bye.